Welcome back everybody, hit that like, hit that subscribe. I'm really emotional today, comment down below. I know I'm gonna get a bunch of people that probably will tell me that I'm a two in here and all this other stuff and blah, 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 but I'm really excited because you know what? Jeff Darlington reported that the Dolphins are not interested in Lamar Jackson. They're not interested in really any quarterback besides Tua Tunga Bailoa. And you know what? I am excited about that. I just do not understand what is the deal with our own fan base trying to sell itself under the rug, especially for like Lamar Jackson. I mean, we're going to go into a rant right now because it's like Lamar Jackson is a guy that has stayed on the field less games than Tua, and has also thrown for less touchdowns than Tua, and also has lost every game he's played with Tua. And you know, people want to come out and say, this guy has no weapons, he has nothing. He, he's had one of the best offensive lines every year that he's been in the league. And the Baltimore Ravens are trying to draft receivers. They draft receivers every single year. Do we ever want to take a second to think that maybe it's Lamar Jackson and the reason why that the receivers aren't good? Because they drafted Rashad Baton, they drafted Marquise Brown, they draft a bunch of receivers. They just don't have a quarterback that can throw the ball. I understand that Lamar Jackson is an incredible athlete. I understand that. But the, the mere fact that people want to sit there and say, we're going to guarantee $200 million to Lamar Jackson and trade to a tongue of Eloa, which, to be honest, last year, he played better than Lamar Jackson. I, I can't fathom this because it, it like blows my mind a lot of the time. Just the, the reasoning of why, why you just, I understand that you want to win a Super Bowl. But you know what's crazy? It's so does every team in the NFL. Every single team in the NFL wants to win a Super Bowl. Do you think that there are teams that the, the fan base just wants to throw away everything and just lose every single year or, or just get to one playoff? No, every team wants to win the Super Bowl. That's the point of football. It's not easy. That's the problem. And a lot of the time we have a organization that decides to make moves based upon cool names instead of actually realizing that we can build to where we are contending every single year that we're playing. And this is another one of those things with, with our fan base that these people, you want Lamar Jackson, who has lost to Tua every single time he's played and has been in the lead every time he's played Tua, has lost it every single time. And a guy that, sure, he was MVP four years ago. I get that. That's great. 36 touchdowns. Tua threw 25 this year, and he missed six games. So what you're telling me is you want a guy that on his best year throws 10 more touchdowns than Tua and can run faster. How is that going to bring us to the Super Bowl? Because, you know, if I'm not mistaken, when they had the MVP year, they lost in the first round of the playoffs. And they look like crap. So his best year, he couldn't even get past the first game in the playoffs. How is that going to make us a Super Bowl contender? I don't understand. So, again, Jeff Darlington reported that they're not interested in anybody, which is exactly what most real Dolphins fans knew, is that we're not trying to move on from Tua. Tua showed that he has excellent, excellent upside if we can put all the pieces together. And, again, with Lamar Jackson, we're basically looking at the same problem is that both of them can't stay on the field, except one of them is on the upside and the other one is declining. The mere fact that you want to argue that Lamar Jackson is a better quarterback, but his own team doesn't even want him, how does that not spark interest? His own team doesn't even want him, in so much so that they are putting a franchise tag on him 
in a way so that they could get interest from the league to see if they could get trade options for him. And what's crazy, nobody wanted him. Not a single team has really come up and shown that they really would like to have Lamar Jackson. I understand if next year, Tua, because again, I know people want to say that we gave him this year, and he showed that he is in the MVP conversation when he's at his best. If next year he falls flat on his face, guess what? We're going to draft another quarterback because there are plenty of quarterbacks that are coming out next year. Caleb Williams, he already wants to go to the Dolphins. We're going to trade up to get a quarterback. So trying to get a quarterback that is older, injury prone, and any quarterback, like it doesn't even matter. It's like Tom Brady. We're going to have to trade some crap to get Tom Brady on our team. I don't understand why you take this year, see if Tua can play. Because to be honest, whenever Tua plays, we win. Um, I, I just, I, I don't know how you can not see that. Is that when the kid is playing, we have a chance to go to the playoffs every year that he has played. So the mere fact of that. We're giving him weapons, and we went to the playoffs last year for the first time in a very long time, and he didn't even play for the rest of the last three games of the season. Ugh, God, it, it's like it's frustrating to even think about because, again, if he doesn't work out next year, we just draft a quarterback, and then we have all of our weapons, and we have a rookie contract that is small that we can sign more players. Why? This fan base wants to have a guaranteed contract so that we cannot sign a single other player and that we are dedicating everything to a quarterback in this day and age like Lamar Jackson, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, who, to be honest, they're on the back ends of their career, blows my mind. Tua, when we pick up the fifth-year option, because I'm sorry to tell you guys this, but we're probably going to pick up his fifth-year option because it's cheaper. We're going to have him cheap for this year, this coming year, and then the year after that, we're going to have a cheap quarterback option. And then I'll be real with you guys, I don't think Tua's going to really ask for a significant amount of money. I think he wants to win. And when we show the next year or so that we are going to win and he can win and he knows that he's going to get that sniffing shot at the Super Bowl, I don't think he's going to ask for a lot of money. And... Right now, we have a cheap option as quarterback. We can surround our team with more players and have a way better chance of winning than getting a quarterback, having zero cap room, having to cut every single other person, and being stuck left to sit there and go, Ugh, I hope he can stay on the field. Ugh, I hope he can get the ball to Tyreek, which, sure, uh, he maybe he could. Probably the same way that Tua did, too. I, I just... You have to look at the people's tape and you have to see that you're talking about the past man to it is showing that he's on the upside of his career and i get it but the, the injury question comes into concern but every quarterback has injuries I, I mean all the best ones have had significant injuries if Tua can stay healthy which i understand it's a big if but the thing is is if that if becomes truth we are winning a lot of games and it's just pure fact when Tua was healthy he is a good quarterback and what's even crazier which people aren't even taking into account is that the games that Tua did struggle is against zone defenses that Vic Fangio created so on top of that we have a defensive coordinator that Tua already played against man and he knows how to beat man he's shown it he carves man coverage up all the time. Now the thing he struggled against, he's going to be playing against every single day in practice. So now he's going to know how to beat that coverage. It's just more so that it's not even, there's no point in even arguing to his prowess because I'm just going to let it happen next year. I, I, I understand where everybody comes from with the injury concerns, but if Buddy stays healthy next year, I'm, I'm, the, the sky is the limit. Yes, he's not 
what makes people rock on because he's not a super athlete that can run four twos and can shake everybody and he's not like oh that's crazy exciting i get that he's different what he is is he's a peyton manning that he's going to sit step back drew Brees it and just be accurate with the ball and just throw the ball over and over again that's what he's going to be he's not going to be that crazy awesome like shifty you know running down the field he's just going to be the accurate passer and he's going to get the ball to everybody and you could say game manager i don't think so if you look at a lot of his throws last year those weren't game manager throws those are throws that mvp caliber quarterbacks make in between three defenders over everybody in between two defenders while he's running to his left he made unbelievable throws last year He's come back from deficits. He's done every single thing that you wanted him to do. And somehow people still think he's trash just because he had a couple of bad games. Joe Burrow has had bad games. Tom Brady has had bad games. Justin Herbert has had horrible games. Who else? Peyton Manning has had bad games. Peyton Manning's first rookie season, he threw the most interceptions in the league. Every quarterback has had bad games. And every quarterback has had off years. But the best ones showcase to you that their talent level can take them places. The offensive line for Tua was crap as well. He had backups all across the line and still had MVP numbers. So you can imagine that if they get a couple of pieces on that offensive line, which first off, getting a blindside protector, because Tua has not had a blindside protector since he's been in the league. His right tackle has been the worst offensive lineman on his offensive line every single year. He has not had a blindside tackle. Why do you think he gets antsy sometimes in the pocket? Because the place that he can't see, you have the worst player. It's ridiculous. And they are going to fix that this year. And it's going to be different. But that's all I want to say about that because I could go on forever. I just, I don't understand this fan base and how you see what he can be and they're quiet when he has the MVP caliber thing. And then when he throws a couple of bad passes, it's like, oh, look at him, there we go. It's, it's like you don't make any sense because I was hearing none of this when he was doing his thing. None of this. But we'll move on to the next thing is that Byron Jones is set to be released, which we all knew was going to happen. And you know what's crazy is the media is going to spin it like, oh, my God, the Dolphins are releasing him when he said his, his sweet little heart is broken from all the men. No. It's, it's just, uh, this, this is why this day and age kind of frustrates me is because they're not releasing him because he's injuries and, you know, it's such an, uh, a crazy thing to do to a guy that spoke his heart. He's not speaking his heart. Just like the Dolphins are doing for themselves what they need to do to get cap space, Byron Jones put out all that little Twitter crap so that he could get what he wanted, which is go to a team that he wants to go to instead of letting the Miami Dolphins trade him for draft picks. Because to be honest, at the end of this season, we probably could have gotten like a second or a third for him. Now we can't do anything. So now we just have to release him so he can go to whatever team he wants. He did what he needed to do, and now we're doing what we need to do. I, I, I hate this, like, this day and age where we just spin things into the way that we think it's supposed to be and you don't really see the underlying what is going on. You don't use smarts. This day and age, people don't use smarts. They just use like, oh, I see numbers and that's what I'm going to compute on. Two is our quarterback next year. And I see it for the foreseeable future. And if not, then we'll get Caleb Williams. And it's still a win-win. So I don't understand what anybody's complaining about. We have another year of watching a person throw for probably close to 30 touchdowns and have the top three offense passing game in the league. It's, I know, it's so hard to watch. But, yeah, so that's what's going on with the Dolphins. As always, hope you have a great rest of your day. Fins up. Peace.